Why is Donald Trump, a self-proclaimed Christian, trying to replace the fallen statue of 33rd degree Freemason Albert Pike? In case you're not aware, Albert Pike was a world-renowned Luciferian and 33rd degree Freemason who wrote the occultic book entitled Morals and Dogma where he said, quote, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name given to the spirit of darkness, Lucifer, the son of morning, it is he who bears the light, doubt it not. Recently, the statue of Albert Pike in Washington, D.C. was torn down and set on fire by an angry mob who may not have realized the true significance of the statue and why it was there in the first place. Needless to say, we should all be cheering the removal of that Luciferian statue as it represents ancient black magic and rituals that date all the way back to the Babylonian mystery schools. In this specific case, it seems that everyone was happy about this statue coming down. Everyone, except Donald Trump, that is. On Thursday, June 25th, Washington, D.C. local news outlet NBC4 publishes this article entitled, quote, Trump asks for toppled D.C. Confederate statue to be put back up. A statue of Albert Pike who was a Confederate general and leader of the Freemasons, was torn down and set on fire the night of Juneteenth, the article goes on to say. President Donald Trump personally requested that a statue of a Confederate general be put back up, less than a week after cheering protesters toppled it and set it on fire in a Washington, D.C. park, NBC News reports. Trump called Interior Secretary David Bernhardt and asked the Park Service to restore the statue of Brigadier General Albert Pike, two sources told NBC News. The White House did not provide a comment, NBC News reported, but an Interior Department spokesperson reiterated Bernhardt's call calls for law and order. The secretary has made his position quite clear when it comes to lawlessness, violence against police, and destruction of public property, the spokesperson said. The fight over statues and public memorials in the Capitol reached a boiling point this week putting the White House, city officials, and protesters at odds with each other. Protesters surrounded D.C.'s only outdoor statue of a Confederate on Friday, the night of Juneteenth. They wrapped ropes around the statue and pulled until it fell. Then the statue was set on fire. News 4 cameras captured the scene on live TV. D.C. police officers were standing nearby as protesters took down the statue, which is on federal land and under the jurisdiction of the National Park Service and U.S. Park Police. The Pike statue, dedicated in 1901, has been a source of controversy over the years. The former Confederate general was also a longtime influential leader of the Freemasons who revere Pike. It was built at the request of Masons, who successfully lobbied Congress to grant them the land for the statue as long as Pike would be depicted in civilian, not military clothing. D.C. officials have been trying to remove the statue for years. The D.C. Council said it first called for its removal in 1992. Eleanor Holmes Norton has introduced multiple bills in Congress to get it removed, but each has stalled. Norton and D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser said the statue should be removed through legislation, not vandalism. But they had not called for the statue to be restored. Trump has been troubled as protesters take down numerous statues of Confederate generals and other figures throughout the nation and promised executive action this week to address it. The federal government on Wednesday had activated 400 D.C. National Guard members to be on standby, ready to help protect statues if protesters target them again. Protesters have called for two other statues on federal land in D.C. to be removed. A group of people tied ropes around the statue of Andrew Jackson in Lafayette Square on Monday night, but were stopped by police who deployed pepper spray. A statue of Abraham Lincoln standing over an emancipated black man has also been criticized." End quote. So according to this article, Donald Trump is calling for this statue to be replaced and restored. Now this article doesn't give any specific quotes from Donald Trump himself, but only sources within the White House. So we don't know if this is 100% true or if it's another incidence of fake news. That being said, I would advise all of you to keep watch on this because we don't know what Trump said specifically. So. If the statue comes back up, we know this article was accurate. And if it stays down, we know it's just another instance of fake news. However, we know what Albert Pike meant to these people, and we know what he stands for. Pike was fascinated by the idea of a one-world government, 
and ultimately he became the head of this Luciferian conspiracy. Between 1859 and 1871, he, Pike, worked out a military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world, which he considered would forward the conspiracy to its final stage in the 20th century. Again, I remind that these conspirators were never concerned with immediate success. They always operated on a long-range view. Pike did most of his work in his home in Little Rock, Arkansas. But a few years later, when the Illuminati's lodges of the Grand Orient became suspect and repudiated because of Mazzini's revolutionary activities in Europe, Pike organized what he called the new and reformed Palladian Rite. He set up three supreme councils, one in Charleston, South Carolina, one in Rome, Italy, and the third in Berlin, Germany. He had Mazzini establish 23 subordinate councils in strategic locations throughout the world. These have been the secret headquarters of the world revolutionary movement ever since. Long before Marconi invented radio, the scientists in the Illuminati had found the means for Pike and the heads of his councils to communicate secretly. It was the discovery of that secret that enabled intelligence officers to understand how apparently unrelated incidents, one such as the assassination of an Austrian prince at Sarajevo, took place simultaneously throughout the world, which developed into a war or a revolution. Pike's plan was as simple as it has proved effective. It called for communism, Nazism, political Zionism, and other international movements be organized and used to foment three global world wars and at least two major revolutions. Pike stated that after World War III is ended, those who will inspire to undisputed world domination will provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. Quoting his own words, taken from the letter he wrote to Mazzini, and which letter is now catalogued in the British Museum in London, England, he said, We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a great social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery, and of most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the people forced to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization, and the multitudes disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will be from that moment on without direction and leadership, and anxious for an ideal but without knowledge where to send its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out into public view, a manifestation which will result from a general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. So I think it's safe to assume that yes, the statue will be coming back up. And let me make myself clear. I don't support the removal of historical monuments, but statues like this are not historical. They're idols. They're idols that represent evil and pay homage to the principalities and powers who run this world. Ephesians 6.12 tells us this, quote, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. That's exactly what we're dealing with here. Statue or no statue, this fact remains unchanged. Our world is controlled by spiritual entities, and the only way to escape their grasp is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Please hit that like button and add a comment if you haven't done so already. And please share this video because you sharing this video is the only way to bypass YouTube's algorithm. Your direct action can help us tremendously. So send this video to everybody you know. And until next time, thank you all for watching 
and God bless you all.